So here we are for the review of qualifying from Spa for the 2019 Belgian Grand Prix. Formula 1 is now, of course, finally back from the summer break. And we had another great session in 2019 with a couple surprises and some very, very good performances as well. Now, before we get into reviewing the teams, let's, of course, first look at the results from said qualifying session. So... Charles Leclerc, by three quarters of a second, takes pole position on a 42.5 from Sebastian Vettel second, Lewis Hamilton just behind in third, Valtteri Bottas just behind Hamilton in P4, Verstappen P5, Ricardo sixth, Hulkenberg seventh, Raikkonen eighth, Perez ninth, and Kevin Magnussen in P10. Eleventh is Roman Grosjean, twelfth is Lando Norris, thirteenth is Lance Stroll. 14th is Alexander Alban, 15th is Antonio Giovinazzi, 16th is Gazi, 17th Sainz, 18th Kvyat, 19th Ross and 20th Kubitz. So by the way guys, sorry if I read that out very slowly, but I've just seen the worst crash in the history of motorsport in Formula 2 on my TV. But anyway, we'll move on to the review of qualifying. Uh, first off, Mercedes. I think Mercedes actually did pretty well considering you know the lack of power they have they have absolutely no power you know compared to ferrari they're losing half a second on the straights in the middle sector the mercedes is so much better than the ferrari but in the middle sector in the first or third sector they don't have the power they just don't have the power and i think them being as close as they was to sebastian vettel only you know half a tenth or a tenth of a second was pretty good so I think they'll be not happy, but satisfied with what has happened in uh, in qualifying today. And I think for tomorrow's race, given the race pace they showed on Friday compared to Ferrari, I think they are going to be very strong. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mercedes won the race still. So even though they've qualified P3 and P4, do not count them out, especially Lewis Hamilton, because we've seen before when Ferrari have locked out the front row, they've gone on to have, um, you know, Lewis Hamilton has gone on to beat them. So don't count out Lewis Hamilton, even Valtteri Bottas and the entire Mercedes team. But of course, it is Ferrari who are stealing the show with a front row lockout. Charles Leclerc on pole position by three quarters of a second. And you have to say... To out-qualify your teammate by that much is is fantastic, especially when you consider that Sebastian Vettel is a four-time world champion. And I have to say, even though Vettel has qualified second, I think he could have done better today, Sebastian, in terms of pace. Because to be that far off your rookie teammate, and when I mean rookie, I mean rookie, of course, at Ferrari... You can't be that far off your teammate. I mean, if I'm going to criticise Gasly for when he was at Red Bull and being miles off Max Verstappen, I've got to criticise Sebastian Vettel because he was in the fastest car today in qualifying, but was miles off pole position. Charles Leclerc did do a very, very good job. I'm not denying that. But Sebastian Vettel should have been a bit closer, say three tenths closer at least to Charles Leclerc so yeah not great there but Ferrari are in a great position I think to win the race tomorrow all they have to do is hope that their race pace is not too bad or as bad as it was uh, on Friday because if, it's, if it is as bad as it was on Friday then they're not going to win at all because they're way too slow uh, if you look at what happened on Friday with the times during the race simulations so Ferrari, they're in a great position, but there is plenty of work to do before uh, they can even think about winning the Grand Prix. Next up is Red Bull. Uh, Alex Albert, of course, he has to start the back anyway, so he only did qualifying one, and then he basically pulled out qualifying two after a single run. Max Verstappen, P5. I think he did well. I think he did the best he could. Did Max? You have to remember that in terms of power, he doesn't have a car that can really be comparable to the Ferrari. The Ferrari, because of the amount of power it has, has 
a much better overall car or pace than Red Bull do with Honda. So I think Max did the best he could. And I think going into tomorrow's race, I think Max is definitely going to be in the fight for the podium with, you know, Vettel, Hamilton and Bottas. And don't be surprised if Max Verstappen gets a podium because as we've seen in 2019, Max can outperform his car. So I think he will definitely be right up there. And hopefully Albon can make his way uh, through the field. Now going on to the midfield, Renault, even though they do have five place penalties for both drivers, meaning they'll start P11 and P12, today was a very, 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 very good day for Renault. Their best day since Canada. And even though they start from P11 and P12 for the race tomorrow, you have to say that it looks as though Renault have made serious progress because, you know, coming to Spa, who would have thought Renault, with the lack of power they have, would have qualified where they did? Nobody, I think, in their right mind would have thought that. So I think Renault can be very happy despite having to take the five-place penalties for both Ricardo and Hulkenberg. And I think because of the pace they show today, I think that even though they are starting outside the top 10, I think they will still end up finishing in the points because their car today was so, so quick. And normally, as you guys know, the Renault, when it comes to race pace, is normally at its best. So yeah, definitely look out for Renault tomorrow. But for McLaren, it was not a good day at all. McLaren have had an absolute mare today. Carlos Sainz did get very unlucky with when Antonio Giovinazzi had his failure with his power unit because that meant Carlos was now out of qualifying in 17th place. Carlos definitely would have qualified higher, but the McLaren, you have to say, is not, not you know, massively quick. I don't think the McLaren would have been up there with, you know, Kimi Raikkonen or the two Renaults today. The McLaren just don't have that quick of a car. Uh, and for Lando Norris, he was P13. And yeah, McLaren just don't have a quick car. I think that's most likely because, as they said before, uh, McLaren, they are now starting to really focus on, you know, 2020 and 2021 so they can be a top team again, you know, by 2021. So I think the lack of development that McLaren has is now starting to show. So I think McLaren in tomorrow's race are probably not in for a great race they'll be in there for a point but i don't think they're going to be you know climbing through the field very very quickly next up is alpha now alpha actually had a really really good day because uh, antonio giovinazzi for example even though he had his power unit failure at the end of qualifying one meaning that he qualified officially in 15th place he was on pace with his teammate Raikkonen, if not faster than Kimi Raikkonen in qualifying one. So if he had not had the issue he had, which is not his fault or, of course, Alpha's fault, it's Ferrari's fault. I think Antonio would have been right up there with Kimi Raikkonen. So you have to say Alpha have a very, very quick car. Of course, Kimi Raikkonen finished up in P8 and because of the Renault penalties, he will be P6 on the grid. So Alpha are looking really, really competitive for the race tomorrow. I believe Antonio Giovinazzi is probably going to start in 14th or 15th place. Um, and I think Antonio, with the pace the car has, he will probably come through the field. But definitely, Alpha, despite that issue with um, Antonio, Alpha have had a good day for sure because the car is very, very quick, uh, especially in the hands, of course, of Kimi Raikkonen today. Next up is Haas. Haas, I thought, had a pretty good day. I mean, they weren't expecting to be, you know, the front of the midfield or anything like that. Uh, but getting a car into Q3 of Kevin Magnussen, I think that's a pretty good uh, job by Kevin. And I think Kevin went a bit under the radar with, um, you know, how, with how he did. I, I think he did pretty well considering the Haas car is still not that great. And the current spec of Haas car is still not that great. Also, 
Um, Roman Grosjean, I thought, did pretty well as well. Was a bit unlucky not to get through. He was only, I think, half a tenth off Kevin Magnussen. So, I think Haas today did pretty well. But as we know, in the race, even though they're going to start from 8th and uh, ninth, I believe, they are going to drop back because they don't have good race pace and they will destroy their tyres as usual. Next up is Toro Rosso. They qualified in, what was it, 16th and 18th place. Yeah, the Toro Rosso is so, 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 so slow. It's the uh, slowest midfield car. And with Kvyat starting at the back, basically, even though Gasly is going to get promoted a couple positions, I don't see how Toro Rosso for tomorrow are going to do anything. Toro Rosso just, you know, don't have any pace in their car. They're going to need a lot of crashes, a lot of luck, if they are actually going to get, you know, into any type of points paying position. They do not have a quick car at all. But one team that does is uh, Racing Point. Because Racing Point got into Q3 with Sergio Perez. Not a surprise. He's been, up, he's been you know, right up there the entire weekend. And because of the Renault penalties, he will start P7 uh, in the Racing Point. Lance Stroll, you know what? I'm going to praise him. Because even though he got knocked out in Q2 in 13th, he didn't do a lap at the very end of qualifying two. And... If he did, I think Lance would have got through because that Racing Point car is very, very quick. So, you know, well done to Lance for being good in qualifying for the first time in a while. And Racing Point, no doubt about it, have a very, very fast car. And I think definitely with Sergio Perez tomorrow, they are going to be super, super quick and have a good result. And of course, Williams at the very back. Robert Kubica, of course, had a massive massive engine failure and yep he is going to start of course at the back but guys that is it for the review of qualifying and now i'm currently watching the f2 race i just want to say um well wishes to whoever was involved in that crash because that looked absolutely terrifying and i also just want to say there is a chance guys that we might be doing the race watch along tomorrow recorded because i I'm not sure my computer will be able to handle it. That's not a confirmation. It's just, uh, you know, a suggestion. Would you guys, uh, you know, answer this as well. Would you guys still watch the watch along if it was uploaded right after the race, even though it's not live? Let me know in the comments whether you would or not. And I will, uh, you know, take that on board for tomorrow. And if I can stream, then I'll try to if you guys, you know, desperately um, want it. But guys, that's been it for the qualifying review. And we are definitely in for a great race tomorrow.